Okay, uh, class, I just wanted to go over a concept that seems to be coming up a lot, um, questions about it and so forth, and I just want to put some clarification on this, and this is the idea of heat versus work, um, and how we can apply these to an analysis on different flowing systems or different systems we may be interested in looking at. So I think heat is something that I think we, a lot of us intuitively know what it is, but we might have a hard time quantifying it or understanding when it applies to a, a situation or not. As I've said multiple times, if you have two temperatures, T2 greater than T1, you're going to have heat. Um, heat transfer from the hotter body to the colder body. Now, uh, the way we can get around that is if we have some sort of insulation. Um, so, for instance, when you're going outside on a cold day, your body is hotter and hotter temperature than the surroundings, the, the cold air that's around you. And the way you get around that to stop the heat flow is you put on a thick coat, you put something on um, some thick clothes and so forth, gloves and, and whatever, and that provides insulation to stop heat from transferring from your body to the surrounding temperature, uh, the surroundings around you, to the wind and, and the atmosphere and so forth. And you're basically trying to stop your temperature from dropping due to that heat flow. And we, you know, we'll see this all the time when we have some sort of device or some sort of system where we want to prevent heat loss, we wrap it in insulation. And a system where Q is zero, that's called an adiabatic system. And that basically means that it's so well insulated that there's no heat or negligible heat being transferred from the hot, from two different bodies. And let me go ahead, um, well, let me give you some examples. So, you know, we have an example here of, you know, fire. Here's my picture of the fire. And if you're standing here, right there, you're going to get heat hot because there's going to be some heat transferred from you to the fire, or from the fire to you, excuse me, the, the hot fire to your body. Um, an example would be your car engine. You know, we have ourselves a nice little, nice little car. And inside, it has some little combustion taking place in the engine. We're burning gasoline, and that's producing some heat. That if you were to put your hand, just you know, don't don't touch the engine, but put your hand in the air above your engine, you'll feel that it's hot. Another form of heat we might have that we might not realize, but it really is heat, is friction. So if you are have any sort of uh, process that involves friction, there's going to be some heat. So if you're driving your car and you slam on the brakes, you're going to create some friction down here on, on your tires. And you can, you know, if you get there fast enough, you might be able to touch the tires and feel that they're hot. And that friction basically raises the temperature of whatever, you know, the friction is causing the friction. And that uh, raised temperature causes heat transfer from your tires to the surroundings and so forth. And we can have friction occur all, in all sorts of mechanical devices. They so the example is we might have uh, friction for instance in an engine and this is very common where we have parts of the engine that are moving, they're, they're hitting each other, they're, um, they're wearing each other down and that's creating friction which is basically leading to heat loss. Um, so just by the very fact that we have moving parts we oftentimes have heat generated due to just friction being uh, friction between different moving parts. And again, just to remind you, if, if we have a temper, temperature differential, anytime we have this one temperature greater than another, unless it's well insulated, we'll have some heat transfer. And so that's heat. The other concept I want to talk about is the idea of work. Now work is basically, you know, in, in good old terms of classical um, classical physics or classical thermodynamics, um, force times a distance is equal to work. And, you know, you can, you can go back to your physics classes and probably apply this to different situations, apply it to levers, apply it to um, pushing blocks or pushing whatever, but you can use this essential equation to calculate uh, how much work is being done. So the key to this right here is that if we want to have work, we have to apply some sort of force. If we're not applying a force, then that just means this whole thing is zero. So no force means no work. 
with a force, that does mean work. So whenever we have something moving, we're usually, that, that's work. So an example would be if we have this tank of, of some fluid in here and we stuck in some mixer, um, like, you know, if you were mixing yourself a cake together, you have your little beaters that you're mixing it, that's applying some work because it's a moving part. In this case, we might have some chemicals that we're mixing together. Um, so this is an example where we are applying some work to mix this up. If we have our car, for instance, we have some various parts that are moving within the car that are doing work. Um, our turbine, with our turbine, we have some fluid coming in, some fluid coming out, and this thing right here is basically spinning. So we're spinning this part right here, and that's work. We're applying a force in order to spin it. Now, let me look at another example would be something like a condenser or an evaporator where we have some fluid coming in. We'll just say it comes in at liquid and it comes in at vapor, leaves it vapor, and we'll have some heat transfer going on. I'll just write this as Q. If we have no moving parts, then work is equal to zero. So in this case, we're just flowing it through some condenser or evaporator, or we might be flowing it through um, some sort of a throttling valve or any sort of device. You know, whether whatever it is, if we have no moving parts, work is zero. So let time. So we have our equations from class that we've looked at, um, or you may have seen them in the book, but um, delta H is equal to work plus heat. Or I'll just say this is H2 minus H1. Another way we can write it. This, these two equations out. And when we're looking at our device and we're deciding, okay, do we have work? Do we have heat? Well, if we have a, any sort of moving parts that are involved, well, then we'll definitely have work. However, if there's no moving parts, work will be zero. If we have some temper dif differential, um, we will definitely have some heat transfer. Unless the system is so well insulated, it's adiabatic, then at that point, Q is equal to zero. But we can use these equations and if we apply them correctly with the work in a heat, we can apply these equations to solve our system and then find out whatever information we need. So again, just keep straight what's work and what's heat, and that will help you when you're uh, setting up your problems and analyzing them.